Hey guys, it's Tia, welcome to the video. So Q4 is coming up and for me and a lot of other sellers, that's when we make most of our sales. At least last year, Q4, I made around double the sales and revenue that I did throughout the rest of the year. Obviously there's holidays, but it's not just people buying stuff for Halloween, for Thanksgiving, Christmas specifically but also the downstream effects of that. So people seeing other people spend money, which makes them want to spend money, which just sort of spirals into this global boost in economic activity that we want to take advantage of as sellers, even though you know some people might argue that the economy isn't at its highest highs right now, but people are still buying stuff online and Etsy sellers in particular, because it's known as a place to find gifts, especially at this time of year. And there's a lot of tasks that are easy to forget when setting up. So I thought it'd be really helpful to make a checklist of things to get ready before Q4 begins so you can max out your chance of making as many sales as possible. And these are things that I'm gonna be making sure I have ready by the end of this month. I mean, to be fair, these would be good things to make sure you have uh, ready at any point in the year, not just before Q4. So let's see how many of these things you can tick off. There's 20 things on this list. First things first, hide your sales history. For some shops, you'll be able to see what their most recent sales are, which is you know, a good way of telling what's currently selling for them, along with looking at their reviews. But your competitors will also be looking for ideas and you don't want to help them by exposing what's selling for you. Obviously you can't hide your reviews, but you can hide your sales. So go to your shop manager, settings, options, and then scroll down to uh, sold listings, select no, hide them, and people can still see how many sales you've made, but they just won't be able to click through and see what items have actually sold for you. Now, the second thing I want everyone to make sure they have before Q4 begins is 40 or more listings in their shop. Now, the more listings you have, the greater chance of you being found on the search engine. It's just you know, maths, right? But as I've said before, there's no number of listings that guarantees sales. It's dependent on a lot of other different factors. You know, you can make sales with one listing. You can make no sales with 100 listings. But if you invite just one person to open up an Etsy shop or if you haven't done already, you can use my link below to open a shop. You get 40 free listings. So you might as well use those up and for free, you can max out your chances of uh, getting sales. Number three is turn on automatic renewal for all of your listings. You don't want your listings expiring during Q4 without you even knowing. And every time listings renew, they actually get a small boost in the ranks as well. It's fine if you don't want it on for the rest of the year, you can always uh, turn them off afterwards. Just make sure they're actually showing up in the search during Q4. So in the listing section of your shop manager, you wanna select all and go to change renewal options and then select automatic. And you can reverse this after Q4 ends or when the sales die down. So you're not um, sort of wasting money renewing things that aren't selling, but at least keep everything in your shop during Q4. Number four, discounts. So discounts help improve your listing search rank and also help it stand out in search. I have a year round discount in my shop, but if you don't, then Q4 is the time to have a sale. Now, 10% isn't really substantial. No one really cares about 10% discount. Just increase your base price and go 20% or higher is what I would recommend. Number five is free shipping. So again, like discounts, free shipping improves your search rank and you get that green label and that says free shipping on it. That makes your listing more prominent in search results. Number six is to turn on auto reply. So uh, at this point in time, you might get an influx of messages from buyers and prospective customers. If you're gonna be away for a period of time, you may wanna turn on auto reply to improve your chance of getting the star seller badge, which wants you to reply within 24 hours. So you can do this by hovering over your profile picture and then going down to your account and turning on auto reply. The max time you can have this on is for five days. Um, I've also read on the forums a while ago that some people had it on, but Etsy still didn't count their reply and decreased their uh, ranking, uh, decreased their reply score for some reason. I don't know if that's just a glitch, but if you're really bothered about it, just make sure to reply within 24 hours as well. Side note, but getting too many customer messages was actually the reason I decided to switch to mainly selling digital products instead of physical products. But I think that's a topic for another time. So number seven, you want five or more images per listing. Uh, obviously using up all 13 images is ideal, but that might be difficult if you don't have enough high quality images. I don't know if having more images uh, or a video affects your search rank in any way. I don't think it does, to be honest, um, but it just makes the listing look more complete. I don't have videos for mine. If you do have videos, then that's great. 
put those in. If you only have one or two images for a listing, it makes it look like you just haven't spent much effort on it. So number eight is mock-ups. So as part of your images, five or more images, you want at least one mock-up. So a mock-up shows uh, the product in use, either a photo of you or someone else using it. If it's clothing, uh, you should show it being worn or displayed. There's a lot of mock-up generators online that can do this without you having to actually take a photo, like place it, for example. Number nine is to have all 13 tags filled out per listing. Goes without saying you get more organic traffic, the more tags uh, and the more data the algorithm has to work with. Uh, they give you 13, so use all 13. Number 10 is have at least three well-researched keywords in each title. Now I've done a more in-depth video before on how I do search engine optimization, but essentially you want to have some keywords which are low competition and high demand. Uh, you can research these either using research tools or just you know sort of having a look around the Etsy marketplace and doing the calculation yourself but low competition, high demand, that improves your chance of uh, customers actually seeing your listing. Number 11, you want your tags, titles, and descriptions to have keywords in common. Again, I expand on this in the SEO guide, but if you have a keyword that's only in your titles or only in your tags, it will show up in search, but if you have that keyword in both the title and the tags, it shows up even higher. And now this applies to descriptions. So put your most well-researched keywords in both the title and tags of your listings. And I've just done a video on this, but same concept now applies to descriptions. But what's different about descriptions is that you may have heard that descriptions don't count for SEO, but they had a recent update. So as I said, if you want to know the details, watch my latest video, but essentially putting in random keywords in the description won't make your listing show up for them. Unlike the title and the tags, they will get indexed, but the description won't. But if you put the keywords from your titles or tags in the description, so all three fields sharing keywords, that improves their ranking slightly. So focus on the first 160 characters, that's what shows up in the search engine previews and that's what will get indexed. Number 12 is adding the occasions and holidays to the associated items in your shop. So when you upload or edit listings, you have the option to add uh, occasions and holidays. This itself acts like a tag. So even if you don't have the word like Christmas in your title or tags, but you've added it as a holiday for the listing, it will show up when people search for Christmas stuff. So if you have any listings which could be relevant to any of the holidays, not just you know the Q4 ones, but remember to update for others as well. Don't forget Valentine's Day. So number 13 is shop branding, profile pic, banner, announcement, pretty obvious stuff. I don't think this needs any further explanation, but if you do want to edit the branding, then this is the time to do so. Um, obviously the banner is huge. It's the first thing that customers see when they click through to your shop, if you do have a banner. So think about what you want them to pay attention to in your shop. You can air your discounts. If you've got five star reviews, you can emphasize that in your banner. And if you have any sort of bundle listings or special offers, then this is the place to advertise it as well. Your tagline is uh, also something that's pretty prominent that customers will see. So I usually put my discount here. If you want to get creative, you can say something to grab their attention. Number 14 is having your featured items pinned. So pin your best selling or most expensive items at the top of your shop and make sure customers don't skip over those. Number 15 is have your listings advertising your shop. So this seller does it really well here. Um, they've linked to a bundle listing on the descriptions of their actual listings. And you've got to remember that listings are products themselves, but they're also mini advertisements for your shop that get released into the search engine. So make sure you have a message reminding people to come to your shop somewhere, either in the description or the listing images. I actually use both. Um, if you have bundles of bestsellers, you can link them there as well. So even if the customer doesn't buy your listing, but they've had a look at the description, they might think, oh, uh, they've got other stuff on their shop. Let me go have a look there. Number 16 is updating your item quantity. So as I said, with the listing renewals, you don't want your item number getting to zero during Q4 and you not noticing. So I sell print on demand and digital products, but I still need to add inventory numbers. I just put 999 because that's the maximum. I've seen some people put like 10 and when this product starts selling, it will say sort of, uh, there'll be a notice saying hurry up and buy. There's only five left, which increases the urgency, but that's not something I do myself. Number 17 is inserts. So thank you notes, a uh, downloadable one for digital products and physical paper inserts for uh, physical products. On this, you wanna advise against negative reviews and ask for positive reviews. If you're selling digital products for sort of branding and promotional purposes, you could include a document like an RTF or a PDF file that thanks the customer and then gives them instructions on how to download. On mine, I also ask reviews and I have 
this massive headline in bold red saying, please read before leaving a negative review where I basically say, you know, if you have any issues, contact me first. Uh, I think it's easier than damage control. Number 18, almost there. So we want to have a message to buyers of physical and digital items. You can put a coupon code in here. You can, again, ask for reviews. Uh, advise against negative reviews this section is in your shop manager remember to fill it out you can add a small discount as well as i said uh, encourage them to come back and buy more but make sure it doesn't start cutting into your profits because the discounts can stack up pretty quickly again all customers will be seeing this in their inbox after their purchase so another good opportunity to ask for reviews. Number 19 is to update your social media if you have any. As I've said before, social media is not compulsory for Etsy. SEO is pretty much all you need to make sales. You do not have to use social media promotion, um, but if you do, then remember to update it and post about your discounts and holiday sales here. And the last point is shop policies and FAQ. This is something you can add. It's not mandatory, unlike your privacy policy, which you should have as well if you're selling to the EU. And for that, you can just copy and paste the template online, but having an FAQ also makes your shop seem more complete. Customers will be able to see this, so you can just click on edit shop, um, scroll down to the frequently asked questions section, and then click on add an FAQ. So I know that's kind of a long list, but all very easy things to do, high yield things that you can get done in less than a few minutes, most of them. I mean, personally, I still have to update some of my listings, but I'm gonna try and get that done before October rolls around so I can max out my chance of making sales. So how many of these things do you have ticked off? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any questions or anything else to say, I'm happy to hear it. And I'll see you in the next video.